This is Harlan Krummeltz from the Yale School of Medicine. I'm a cardiologist and an author of a study in JAMA on trends and adverse event rates with hospitalized patients, 2010 to 2019. Look, we've, we've all had the experience in the hospital of seeing patients harmed by care that we're providing. A wide range of situations where, say, hospitalized patients got in hospital infections and and then suffered terribly as a result of really oversight in our care, missed opportunities to prevent. I want, I want to say that they're all about people doing something that could be directly traced to the problem, but, but a risk environment where things can happen, adverse events can happen. And, and in some cases, patients even die from these. And so in 1999, the Institute of Medicine came out with a report to Air is Human and identified that many people were being harmed in US hospitals as a result of care that that wasn't optimal, wasn't necessarily as safe as it could be. The risk environment was such that people were, were suffering. After that report, there was a lot of investment, time, effort, attention towards making our hospitals safer and a focus on systems away from this sort of idea that medicine was about a maverick physician or nurse and trying to urge them to be more vigilant, to pay more attention, to make sure the patients got better care, to wash their hands, to, to try to avoid injury within the hospitalization in, uh, episode. But, but at that point, there was a pivot. Now, those things were good. It's important for us to urge people to do better, but, but we recognize that we really need systems in place that make it almost impossible for us to do the wrong thing, that make it almost uh, it automatic that these are gonna be highly safe and reliable environments for patients. So we need to move away from urging individuals to do better to creating systems where it was almost impossible not to do the right thing. So the question was, are we making any progress? So the government undertook a large scale surveillance program in US hospitals. That meant that every year they would go out to hospitals and they would ask them to provide charts. And then those charts would go to professionals who would dig through them and see whether or not there was any evidence that any harm had accrued. They were looking at adverse events, the things that we think are linked to problems in patient safety that we think are likely highly preventable. That's harm that accrues in the course of the hospitalization. Ultimately, there were 21 adverse events that were identified. And so a group of people at Yale and at ARC and at CMS, uh, University of Connecticut, uh, one of our value team members from University of Connecticut came together and said, let's try to consolidate our knowledge from this effort. Over that decade was about 250,000 medical records that people dug through from over 3,000 hospitals across all these different domains. And so what was the result? I mean, there's been a big, a big prelude. So what do we find? Da, 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 da. Actually, actually, over the last decade, there has been some marked improvements. There have been some substantial gains. There have been reductions in the number of these adverse events, preventable adverse events for heart attacks, heart failure, pneumonia, surgical procedures. That's great. You know, in some cases, they've declined almost by half, almost by half, some cases less than that. But still, there's been a steady decline every year. Now, that's the good news. But, but as we pursued this study, I think we had this sense that the journey is far from over, that we ought not be celebrating this. I mean, it's certainly validation that these actually can be reduced because we've reduced them over the past decade. But the issue is, where do we stand? Well, we stand with, by the way, those all other conditions, not counting those four, no real change. So the improvements in those areas where we really focused on conditions, a lot of our quality improvement has focused on heart attacks, heart failure, pneumonia, surgical procedures, and it was paying off, it was paying off. But, but for all other conditions, we didn't see that kind of gain. And then even at the end, even for those conditions that we improved, we're still too high. So we're thinking that it's good. We should celebrate a little bit, maybe, not much. And we should be thinking that we need to double down. We need to increase the speed of improvement. We need to say that as long as anyone's being harmed in the course of hospitalization, we, need, we, should, we should be digging in and making that better. We should be leaning into that. And for all this, all the other conditions, maybe those areas that we were focusing most intently on did improve, but maybe we weren't implementing solutions that were having broad-based effect on all the other conditions. So we need to be thinking about how do we implement solutions across our health systems that have broad-based benefit and are really making the kind of gains that we think that our patients deserve. Now, I had one person ask me recently to say, well, isn't it true that you, know, you really can't get rid of these? I mean, these are just, no matter what you try, it's inevitable. It's one of the costs of receiving care that, that sometimes bad things are going to happen. People are going to fall. Is that my fault? And, and I, what I said was, I think we have to 
put on a little different perspective, a little different thinking cap about this. Why can't we be audacious and say like, those shouldn't happen? And in fact, we can create an environment that's so safe that people don't fall. And by the way, some of the falls might be because people are tired, they're not getting sleep, we're not strengthened, they're malnourished in the hospital. I mean, what are we doing to increase the risk? And what can we do to decrease the risk? We've been socialized, many of us, through the course of our medical training to think, this is just going to happen. It's inevitable. It's futile to try to change it. But the improvements that we saw in the studies just it's not futile. This basic blocking and tackling on patient safety, on the basic kind of processes that occur every day, has a potential to yield a really big return in terms of benefit for our patients. So, so anyway, that's what this study showed. It was a, it really a, a, an effort to bring together the information that's been collected by the government over time in partnership with the government uh, and hospitals around the country in order to show, and the result was some progress, not enough, something to celebrate, but we really shouldn't be celebrating. We should be saying the journey really has just begun and we've got to be able to dedicate ourselves to doing better.